time constraints are a real thing. Uh, you know, they are. This life is limited. It's in, our time here on Earth is quite impermanent. So I aptly called this video or this discussion the Dukkha of Time, preparing for old age, preparing for the unknown. Why these things are important in practice as well. Why is uh, time stressful? First of all, we don't know how much time we have. That's one thing. Like it's always unknown. That is the unknown all the time. We don't know tomorrow. Like as I'm getting older and I've had certain experiences which were very close to death. I've, had, I've been in some car accidents. I've had some uh, experiences, violent experiences, things like this, traumatic experiences where like probably anyone else, what you, you have these experiences where you, your life flashes before your eyes and in that split second, uh, you ask yourself, you know, am, am I, am I going to live or am I going or, or is this it? You know, and I'm sure most of you watching have had, may have had uh, an experience of two or three of these kinds. And that's why uh, time, the, the, the constant, uh, the, the constant restraint, the fact that we, we just don't know uh, when the time is up is something that needs to be uh, reflected on frequently, uh, especially in Buddhism, in, in practice, and understanding the urgency of getting things done and, and doing what has to be done and getting to the point of things and not wasting time. I guess this is one reason why the Buddha talks about uh, 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 part of the precepts is don't, don't waste time or refrain from idle chatter because we just don't have time. We... We go to school, we study, we spend all this time and we focus our minds on careers and goals and, uh, and just, you know, from survival to needs to wants, right? Now, survival, I'm talking primitive survival, where you just, you know, your basic needs have to be met to the, to the, to, to the, to the normal needs, um, to wants, right? And in, and the thing is, is our focus tends to be on career oriented uh, goals which are always extend into the future as and, and take us out of the present moment so we might borrow some money to buy a house which uh, which and pay it off for 30 years with that goal for 30 years not understanding that our time is limited now again you know before anyone says anything I'm not criticizing people who take loans, right? I'm not shaming people who take loans or have to work or have goals. I'm talking about the dukkha of time, why time is so stressful. Because the fact that, first of all, like I've already said, we, we don't know when our time is up. That's one thing. What about the time of our loved ones and everybody else um, around us that we, you know, that we know and that we cherish? We just don't know. And that's adds more stress on the situation because we just don't know how much time we have for ourselves and uh, spending time with others. That's why it's not worth uh, wasting time with others. You know, if you get along, you get along. If you don't get along, just walk, walk away in peace kind of thing. You don't have time to uh, do destruction and damage as well. So this is another thing about these wars, which are just complete waste of time. There's, there's no reason to be killing each other based on race and doctrines and unfortunately doctrines and the wrong views are causing a lot of these wars i don't see what else is the cause um, the, the cause is wrong views the cause is it's us and them you know if you're not part of our group then you need to be cast out as opposed to being inclusive now inclusive i'm not talking about multiculturalism i'm talking the fact that the world is like a tent we all live in this world we all have to share it but the problem is Throughout the ages, people have views. Uh, leaders get have views. They're corrupt views, and and or in greed and hatred of others, and this just causes nothing but commotion, pain, suffering, resentment, uh, trauma, stress, and tragedy. Right. So this is why it's even more important uh, to have a sober mind, to develop your mind and uh, your knowledge towards wisdom, and becoming a peaceful warrior. Right, the peaceful warrior. That's really important uh, for yourself and for the world. The point is, is that when you point your mind to career oriented goals, now lay people, again, I'm not shaming you or saying you're doing something wrong, but 
but remember there's there's more to it remember that this life is impermanent and then if you weren't able to uh, achieve or realize uh, any of the of of the I guess stages of the noble ones right then you have then you're back into you, you stay in the cycle right so when you stay in the cycle what you want to do is make sure that at least you go to a good destination after this after this life and how much time are you investing now in, and this gives more to the point that I really think from my point of view that uh, this life is ma actually meant to make merit it's actually meant to be uh, a, a time to do merit and, and practice merit practice generosity practice all the virtues so the destination after this one is always good so this is how you prepare for the unknown you prepare for the unknown by doing good and doing wholesome deeds all the time and sharpening your mental capacity and mental abilities all the time that's how you prepare for the unknown how do you prepare for old age now this is a difficult one and again the dukkha of old age and the dukkha of time because it's only a matter of time only a matter of time before old age sets in and sickness and then death right and then our time for passing and this is a tricky one because uh, people age differently. We all age differently. Some people are lucky. They live ripe old lives and, and they're still walking. I have a friend in Australia who's a hundred, who, a family friend who's 101 years of age and he counts every day, 101, and you're still walking around. <laughs> it's quite incredible, right? Now, but not all of us have that luck, right? Not all of us have that. Uh, uh, it's not going to happen for all of us, right? So preparing for old age is a tricky one because one thing you need to ask yourself is do you want to be in a home or do you want to be on the street? So this is the reason why we work hard and try to um, uh, save our money wisely and uh, at least have a dwelling or somewhere that we can take refuge in when we get old and have enough money and resources for medicine and things like this. Now usually... You can try to plan for that as much as you like, but you, we really don't know how life will go. I mean, uh, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen because when I was uh, living in New York uh, in 2008, I had people who had worked, I knew people that worked for 40, 50 years. They were in their 70s, 60s, and they lost everything because due to the, the crash of the stock market and, and all kinds of disasters. Imagine that working for forty years and then losing everything, and then and then you're back to renting, and you don't have any income, and you're too old. The energy is not there. So these are pertinent things that I would say to young people and any person that you need to be having in the back of my mind. It's not just important to become successful or have a lot of money. It's what you do with the money and how you plant it. And remember, you can lose it too, right? So this is why virtue and always pays off more in the long run like your generosity practice of generosity that uh, like the buddha said like the, you don't get rich or wealthy or have a lot of things simply just by working it's by virtue by virtue that things come to you by development by cultivation and this is important now the dukkha of time doesn't allow us uh, i guess the the flexibility or the choice to play around or to play games because when you really think about it, it, it only takes a moment of severe sickness or a traumatic accident or, you know, something like a, a tragedy or something to remind you quickly how, how quick you can uh, be cast out of this world. I, like sometimes, uh, I, I, you know, as I'm getting older, I get pains and things like this and sometimes I get really bad pains where I'm debilitated, right? It's stomach cramps or things like this where I just can't move for a few hours. And that always reminds me, hey, you know, it, you know things, things are, things are uh, on thin ice here. Like I could be gone the next minute, right? And this is reality. This is reality. This is how it really is. This body has a limited span of time, of uh, capability, right? It, it doesn't. It's not infinite resource. It's not an infinite resource, right? So preparing for 
the bad things in life, when we've got the opportunity, we should be uh, focusing our mind, focusing our energies, focusing our actions on wholesome and, and gaining virtue, cultivating and developing virtue, cultivating and developing wisdom, cultivating and developing generosity, cultivating and developing wholesome deeds at all times when we've got the opportunity. Because when we get sick, when we get old, and when the unknown comes, uh, it gives you the platform. Your work, hard work always pays off. Virtue always pays off. Cultivation and development always pays off because you'll always find it there. It's like having gold, a deposit of gold in your bank account kind of thing, in, your, you know, in, in the backyard kind of thing, in the shed. You know, under a cloak of uh, you know an old rug with dust. You know, and when when you look at gold, it doesn't matter if you leave it there for a thousand years; it's still gold, right? It's still gold, and it's still useful even after a thousand years, or two thousand years, or three thousand years, right? If you get a good nugget of gold and put it in your backyard and just let it sit for two thousand years, whoever finds it can is going to benefit greatly from that, right? Gold is gold. Virtue is virtue. Right? Virtue is virtue. Uh, cultivation and development. Wisdom and wis wisdom is wisdom, right? Wisdom is gold in that sense. Right? This is what we need to understand in terms of comprehending the dukkha of time. Now, if you focus on the dukkha of time, if you really penetrate this Dharma, right? You penetrate this Dharma, you reflect on it regularly, you won't be wasting time um, in destructive or negative or uh, let's say, uh, uh, things that uh, create disharmony uh, and ill will in this world because there's just no time for it. If, if, we, if we're truly honest to ourselves, and this is, I send this out to everybody who's clapping on the warmongers out there, all the killing, uh, who's clapping it on and, and saying, yeah, get them and all that kind of rubbish. Think about your own life. Think about how quickly you can be gone from this world. Right? Think about the unknown. When you land into the unknown, and the unknown is tomorrow, the next hour. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the unknown, let alone you know, into the future. Now, when our time comes for passing, you want to make sure that you, you have a bedrock, a strong foundation of virtue, merit, uh, cultivation and development in all areas in order to propel you in a good uh, towards a good destination wherever you go that's if you not don't want to practice so much so you have to dwell in that area of course if you want to go deep into the noble area well then you need to cultivate bhavana well hang on that's that's kind of like a a double a, a double speak it's like saying good good now, in other words bhavana is cultivation and development uh, as far as my definition as as far as my definition leads me to believe as for what I know. What Buddha said, the highest merit is practicing the Noble Eightfold, eightfold, eightfold Path. Now, if, you, if, if that's beyond you, you can still practice the five precepts and everything else. But remember, if you focus, it's, it's all about energy and focus as well. Like the, It's not all about, but these two factors, energy and focus. Now, energy and focus... These two things are very important where you, where, you, where you focus your energy, where you focus your mind, and that sometimes can lead to some kind of goal that takes 40, 50 years, which is of the mundane nature, the mundane nature. So I, I tell you, be careful of that, right? So the best thing to understand, I think, is you know, reflect on what I said about the gold example. You, know, you could... When you've got gold and you store it somewhere, it doesn't matter whether you wait 10 years, 1,000 years, not that you'll be around 1,000 years, but what I'm saying is gold is gold. It always has value in, in the mundane level of things, right? Imagine, imagine the value of wisdom. Imagine the value of having uh, uh, lots and lots of virtue. Look, look at the value of the Buddha, for example, all the developments and knowledges and, and all the everything the Buddha had, right? All the capabilities the Buddha had. It's more than gold. Right? So it's worth your time, it's worth your energy, it's worth your effort to 
uh, first of all, comprehend the dukkha of time in this sense, right? Of course, comprehend dukkha in all areas, but the dukkha of time is something that can slip by real quick. Like you, 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 it's very easy to shift in default mode and just start enjoying yourself and pleasuring yourself in banal things and forget that you know at any time the thin ice that you walk on that we walk on is going to break and we're gone, right? So what will you land on? Will you sink into? Uh, will you sink into the unwholesome? Will you sink into uh, no virtue or no merit? Now that's not something good, and I don't wish that on you or anybody. So this is something that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I'll be in Sydney, Australia, uh, December first uh, this year to December the seventeenth. Um, if you want to come and visit, uh, please uh, uh, join or log into Buddhist.cafe and you can contact me through there or come and visit me at Wat Buddha Rangsi in Annandale um, in Sydney if you want to visit me or come and see me either in the morning or afternoon. Uh, it'd be good to meet you if you are in the Sydney area. You're welcome to uh, come and come and visit the temple that I'll be staying at there. It's just a little te little city temple there. So I welcome I welcome anyone who's in the Sydney area to come and visit. So that's December the 1st uh, through December the 17th.